everyone, Shroom over here, and today we're back for another episode of the Nickname Academy, where I'm going to take every single Pokemon from Bulbasaur right the way through to Eternatus and give them all nicknames, and when future generations come out, we're going to do them as well. Yes, indeed. So, um, we are continuing with Generation 3. Uh, there are, after this one, there's going to be two more, and then we're going to be done with Gen 3. Uh, this video is probably going to be a little bit shorter than others. There's not quite so many to go through in this one. But with that being said, we are going to kick things off. And last time we ended with Cacturn, so we are starting today with Swablu, the little blue bird with the cloudy wings. And that is going to be called Parish. Reason for this uh, Parish is a New York based cleaning supplies company. Yeah, my research into these nicknames takes me around some weird places, <clears throat> um, ladies and gents. And that is how I discovered this New York cleaning supplies company called Parish. Um, now, they stock all sorts of cleaning supplies, including janitorial supplies, which include toilet swabs. Using, you know, toilet swabs to swab toilets, or indeed, swab loos. Yeah, see what I did there? Swab loo, swabbing loos with toilet swabs, the janitorial supplies. That can be found in this New York cleaning company called Parish. So that is why swab is going to be called Parish. It's a weird one, but as I say, I go to weird places when I'm looking for nicknames. Now, slightly less weird is going to be Swablu's evolution, Altaria. Altaria is going to be called Unchain the Rain. Remember how I said last time that we might be looking at bands for this one? Well, this is exactly it. Unchain the Rain is a song by a band called Altaria. I, it's a song that I quite like, actually. It's one of the only ones I know by them, but I've known it for a little while, and as soon as I discovered the song, I started nicknaming my Altaria's Unchain the Rain, and here we are, me looking at nicknames. So that is where that one comes from. Altaria, Unchain the Rain. And that's what I would use for the Mega as well. Um, you know, the addition of a fairy typing doesn't really give me anything new to work with. So, yeah, just keeping him, him Unchain the Rain for Mega Altaria as well. Next up, we have Zangoose. Zangoose is my third favourite Pokemon of all time, behind Tyrantrum and, of course, Murkrow at the top. But Zangoose is going to be called Hashtag The Goose is Loose. Now, where does this come from? Well, um, this comes from Game of Thrones. So, Game of Thrones has a character called Roose Bolton, um, who was kind of a, a secondary background character and advisor to the Starks and a bannerman of the Starks for a very long time. And then came one of the most famous episodes of Game of Thrones that was ever made, The Red Wedding. Now, this is where Roose Bolton steps forward from the shadows into the light and reveals himself to be a deep in, un like, traitor to the Starks. He facilitates just the brutal murder of the Starks and everyone they love and hold dear. Uh, a devilish traitor, he's a, a very just a cold, calculating badass. He takes no prisoners and just ruins people, basically. He's nasty. Nasty piece of work. And Zangoose is much the same, outside of being a nasty piece of work other than the yeah, nasty snarl on his face. Uh, Zangoose takes no prisoners, very powerful, um, hits hard. And yeah, basically I wanted to base him off Roos Bolton. Um, now when the Red Wedding happened and Roos Bolton sort of came forward as revealing who he was, the hashtag going around Twitter was the Roos is loose. Um, so I've simply changed that and gone with the Goose is loose. And that is what Zangoose is called. <clears throat> On Wi-Fi I'll call it uh, Goose Bolton because the Goose is loose doesn't fit. Um, or at least hashtag the Goose is loose. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't fit on Wi-Fi. So I'll call it Goose Bolton there, but on, um, on Showdown, so the, the big nickname, character, limit, Zangoose is going to be the Goose is Loose. Now Zangoose's counterpart in the games is Surviper, and Surviper is going to be a much simpler nickname, it's going to be called Scarlet, named after a red-tailed boa called Scarlet, who uh, belongs to my lovely girlfriend Jessie. Um, very simple nickname, you know, Surviper and Scarlet both snakes, red-tailed boa, Surviper has a red tail, done and dusted, Surviper is called Scarlet. Now next up we have Lunatone. Now, Lunatone is going to be called Apollo 10. Apollo 10 uh, was a 1969 moon mission. I'm not sure if it was like a moon landing mission. I'm not really sure what the whole basis of the mission was for. But one of the side effects of this mission was that um, while flying around the far side of the moon, I guess to maybe get like a gravity assist to come back, um, this 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 effect was heard. They heard what they what they later described as moon music. These kind of, I don't know, like ethereal sounds that they heard on radar as they go around the far side of the moon. And people jumped to the conclusion of, oh, it must be aliens trying to make contact with us. We're not really sure about that, of course, to this day. Well, maybe they are in Area 51. Who can say? 
Um, not me, that's for sure. But Moon Music is the nickname we're giving Lunatone because obviously Luna is the aspect of its name that comes from the moon and tone is associated with sound and music. So a lunar tone is essentially moon music, which was discovered on the Apollo 10 mission and that's why lunar tone is gonna be called Apollo 10. Next up we have Sol Rock. Sol Rock, the counterpart to lunar tone is gonna be called 10CC. And once again, it's a musical reference. This is named after the band 10CC who have a 1973 song, song called Hot Sun Rock, which is exactly what um, Sol Rock is. It's a rock based off the sun, it's a hot sun rock. Song by 10CC, and that's going to be the nickname for Soul Rock. So next up we have Barboach, and Barboach is going to be called Chat Room. Uh, and Barboach and Wishcast's names are sort of coming off the same kind of theme, the theme of catfishing. Catfishing, of course, uh, pretending to be someone else, most often on chat rooms. So if you've been in a chat room with dodgy people, it can evolve into them trying to catfish you. And, you know, Barboach is a catfish is basically the, the, the TLDR version of this. Barboach is a catfish. Sometimes you get catfishing in chat rooms. Barboach is gonna be called chat room. Done. The evolution of that is going along the same uh, themes. This is Whiskash. Whiskash is going to be called Not A Joke Jim um, because catfishing being a form of identity theft, um, this nickname comes from a very famous moment from uh, The Office, the US Office, the uh, series. Uh, where you've got Jim constantly playing tricks on Dwight, and in this particular episode, he takes on Dwight's persona. He gets the uh, the glasses that he found in a drugstore, and he gets the little calculator watch and the phone clip on his belt and the clothes and everything. He pays eleven dollars for it. A little bit true that I know. And um, it's just one of the very famous lines of the entire series is uh, Dwight looking at Jim, going, "Identity theft is not a joke, Jim." And uh, yeah, he just keeps pretending to be Dwight. So uh, yeah, identity theft, catfishing, not a joke, Jim. Whiskash is going to be called not a joke, Jim. <laughs> Next up, we have another water type, and it's going to be Corfish. Corfish is going to be named Bird. Quite confusingly, I know, but there is method in my madness. I know that Corfish is not a bird because it doesn't have flappers. It kind of has a bit of a beak, and it does lay eggs probably, but it doesn't have flappers, so it can't be a bird, according to the Dan Sigi, um what makes a bird list. Uh, you need a beak, you need flappers, and you need to lay eggs, which is why Caracosta is a bird. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Corfish, bird, why? Well, uh, this is not taken from the animal bird, it's taken from a surfboard company called Bird Surfboards. And they have a model called the Corfish. That's what Corfish is, that's its name. <laughs> so yeah, Corfish, very simply named after the model surfboard from the Bird Surfboard Company. So, Corfish is gonna be called Bird. Next up, <clears throat> Corfish's evolution is Cruel Daunt. A uh, very, very simple one here. It's simply going to be called Thermidor uh, because it looks like a lobster Thermidor. Kind of based off a crayfish, which is kind of like a lobster. But um, Thermidor being a way of cooking lobster, and when you cook lobster, crayfish, any of those crustaceans, they turn red. And Cruel Daunt is red. So there we go. Very simple. Cruel Daunt is going to be called Thermidor. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, next up, we have Baltoy. Baltoy is going to be called Inception, um, and it's a very simple reason for that, because Baltoy looks like a dreidel, and the dreidel is um, this sort of anchor thing that Leo, um, Leonardo DiCaprio's character has to make sure he knows what's real and what's not, um, and he spins it, I think if it keeps spinning, he's, he's in the fake world, and if it falls, he's in the real world. I'm not sure of the details, the first time I watched Inception, I walked in halfway through, and they're already like two layers deep, most confused I've ever been in a movie, um, at Pro of Nothing second only to Donnie Darko, which I still don't understand. Um, <laughs> but yes, uh, Baltoy is called uh, Inception, based off the movie of the dreidel that's a key part of said movie. <coughs> Excuse me, bit of a cough, promise I don't have coronavirus. <laughs> Baltoy evolves into Claydol. Claydol is going to be called Zomari, uh, and this is an anime reference to one of my favorite animes of all time, Bleach. Uh, Zomari is a character, he is a class of character called an Aranka, or Aranka, something like that. Basically he is uh, a general, or espada, in the army of Aizen, the big bad. Um, and one of his, his powers is, he has the power to like cover his body with eyes, especially around sort of the, the waistal area, which expands outwards. And he does remind me a lot of Claydol with that, he sort of, he sits floating in the air in a kind of meditative pose, and this sort of band appears around his, his waist and it's covered in eyes, exactly like Claydol has. So that's where Claydol's based off him, gonna be called Zamari. Next up, we have Lilip. Lilip is going to be called Dyson. 
uh, of course, the brand of vacuum cleaners. Uh, and this one in particular is based off the Dyson Ball Animal 2, which is a brand of vacuum cleaner that I now know exists from doing this series. I've gained so much useless information doing this series. Like, I always enjoyed pub quizzes and I was always quite good at them because my head was already filled with useless information. After this, I'm going to be an absolute god in pub quizzes. Um, <laughs> simply because of the useless information I've gathered from looking for nicknames. But, back on track to Lily, the Dyson Ball Animal 2 claims to have the most powerful suction of any vacuum cleaner. And Lilip is based off a barnacle and attaches itself to rocks using suction. It even has the ability suction cups, I believe. So, Lilip is going to be called Dyson for that reason. Moving on and taking it slightly lower brow, we have Cradily, who's going to be called Fifty Shades of Cray. Yes, it's based off Fifty Shades of Grey. Yes, it's because Cradily looks like it has sexual aids around its neck. I know, I can go lowbrow too, okay? They're not all highbrow thinking here, they're not all simple. Sometimes it gets a bit like that. I couldn't think of anything else for Cradley, so it's going to be Fifty Shades of Cray, and I like the wordplay, so there we go. Moving very swiftly on from that, we have the last evolution we're going to look at today, the other Gen 3 fossils, starting with Anorith. Anorith is going to be called Ammonia. Now, the reason for this is Ammonia... <clears throat> is uh, has a very, very distinctive smell, not a nice smell, and it's the smell that is given off by gone-off shrimp. When you have shrimp that's gone off, it gets all nasty and it gives off a very, very pungent smell, and that smell is ammonia that's forming within the creature. Now, Anorith in the Pokedex is known as the Old Shrimp Pokemon. So yeah, it's an old shrimp. An old shrimp that's gone off gives off the smell of ammonia, so Anorith is going to be called Ammonia. The final Pokemon we're going to look at today has one of the stupidest names of the series. We started, of, of, of the video I should say, in the video we started dumb, we're going to finish dumb looking at companies with Armaldo. <clears throat> and Armaldo is going to be called Gloves. Now, the reason for this is Aldo is what we're taking from the Armaldo section. The second part of that, the Aldo. Aldo is a UK shoe store. Not to be confused with Aldi, we have Aldo. <coughs> It's a UK shoe store, um, so it makes shoes. But, if it was for hands as well, it would make gloves. So, Aldo makes shoes, but if it was an arm Aldo, it would make gloves. <laughs> so yeah, arm Aldo is going to be called gloves for that very, very stupid reason. They're not all fun and clever, some of them are dumb, as you know by now. But yes, that is where we're going to wrap things up for this video. So thank you everyone for watching, I do hope that you enjoyed. Remember, as ever, uh, to leave your nicknames for Pokemon we covered in this video in the comment section because I love, love, love hearing your thought processes alongside mine going into nicknaming these Pokemon. And remember, every Pokemon deserves a nickname, so make sure you give them one. But I'm going to get out of here. Next time, we're going to kick things off with Feebas, but that's for the next video. So, my final thank you to you all for watching, and I guess with that, I'll see you next time. Laters.